So right off the bat, the title might seem like fear-mongering. In an age where the vast majority of games and gaming services are migrating to a digital-only platform, saying it is extremely dangerous is a far-reaching assertion. But with the fast-approaching launch of Google Stadia, which aims to offset the need for physical hardware, thus transforming yet another aspect of the space to a digital-only medium, it is becoming increasingly relevant to highlight the inherent risk of allowing such a focus on products and formats that users are unable to actually control. I've covered this topic before and it received somewhat mixed results. My position was that the rise in online only digital download games came with the deeply seated risk of losing access to the product that you paid for either temporarily or permanently based on a series of factors that the user has no control over. In the early days of gaming, you had a console or a PC or whatever it was, and you purchased a physical game. That physical disc could then be slotted or played for the most part, whenever and wherever you wanted to, as long as you had the hardware. Essentially, gamers were purchasing a permanent, irrevocable individual license tied to a physical product, which then became their responsibility to preserve and protect. As long as they did that, their access to that game and ability to play it was permanent and constant, barring power outages or other freak circumstances. This is where I ran into a disconnect, however. At no point have I ever argued that copyright or trademark ownership occurs. When a player buys a physical disc, they do not own the game. They own an individual license to play the game. The same way owning a book does not mean you own the story, you own a copy of that story. But your access to that copy is effectively unconditional. In the modern age of gaming, however, with the rise of subscription-based services, digital downloads, as well as online-only games and libraries, where once gamers had a predictable and constant ability to play their games, they are now faced with a completely unreliable infrastructure that can result in a total loss of the game, the ability to play it, or both, for a multitude of reasons, none of which are ultimately decided by the player themselves. Now, in some circumstances, having an online-only game is unavoidable. If the game is predicated on player-to-player -player interactions, there must be servers, and you must maintain a connection to those servers. It is already slightly troubling to have no guaranteed longevity for those servers, and historically we have seen entire games disappear because the company in control of their infrastructure decided to shut everything down. But by and large, in certain instances, having an online-only game that operates exclusively through a digital platform is understandable. Stadia, however, is a step further, and it's not a step that we should be accepting without aggressive skepticism. I've addressed this issue in the past, so I will briefly summarize rather than going in-depth. Effectively, Stadia will seek to supplant physical hardware and allow for game streaming to occur with a free version and a subscription-based version differentiated by resolution and frame rate. Players who do not subscribe to the premium version can stream games at 1080p, 60fps, and players that do can access 4K. But moving past the quality of the stream itself is the issue of product access. On Google Stadia, players will seemingly be required to purchase the majority of games that they wish to play through the platform itself, but those games remain in an isolated environment that requires the support of Google and a constant high-speed connection to access. On a surface level, this seems like just any other launcher. You can't play games on Steam without access to Steam, and your purchases remain confined to the platform. But for Google Stadia, it's a bit more intense. Steam and many other launchers like it have an offline mode. It doesn't mean that every game and every mode within that game will function, but it's certainly something. A store like GOG has consumer-friendly DRM, or Digital Rights Management Policies. In fact, one of their core principles is called the FCK DRM Initiative. It's not an absolutely perfect scenario, but it's a big step in the right direction. Stadia will possibly be the worst version of game accessibility yet, while simultaneously being touted as a play-anywhere hardware replacement that will make gaming more accessible. The correlation I want to draw today is between Stadia game access or digital only game access in general and Microsoft eBooks. It may seem like two completely unrelated fields, but the truth is that video games and other forms of digital media like music or movies are very closely related. In 2017, Microsoft began selling eBooks through their digital storefront. It was a clunky setup since users had to use Microsoft's own Edge browser, which was poorly constructed, but it was at least functional. Not only that, but their aggressive DRM policies made it so that buyers really had no other option. You could either read the book through Microsoft itself or not at all. In a perfect world, Microsoft would update their browser, expand the service, and provide value to their customers. But in reality, with the primary focus being profit and revenue, Microsoft decided that since the ebook market was underperforming, it should be deprioritized. This brings us to July 2019, as I make this video. It has now been announced that Microsoft is shutting down the service and deleting all of the ebooks that customers purchased. 
Because of the deeply rooted DRM tools, Microsoft is able to and is retroactively going in and shutting down their entire ebook infrastructure. They are deleting the books that customers bought. This includes annotations that you made or other platform specific notes. And Microsoft will in fact be issuing a full refund for the books purchased with an accompanying credit for those that utilize the annotation tool before a certain date. But the fact remains that customers purchased a product with the expectation of being able to read it and perhaps even the necessity to have access to it for important personal or even professional reasons and Microsoft is completely shutting down the infrastructure and deleting the products. This brings us back to Google Stadia. Google is not known for its flawless track record of services. Let's harken back to Google+. Plus. Google Plus was the tech giant's attempt at breaching into the social networking space, and it was an utter, abysmal, cataclysmic failure of a service. Google Plus certainly had a few users. Some individuals probably loved it and spent a great deal of time on the platform, but by and large, it was despised, reviled, and ignored. Well, seeing this failure, Google shut down the service. In April of 2019, it began deleting consumer accounts and fully dismantling the failed experiment. This does not come without a cost. User photos, videos, posts, and all material for that matter is being wiped out. And I will not try to pretend that this is going to be some monumental disservice to users since the platform was a graveyard anyway, no one hardly used it, but it goes to show that digital platforms where consumers are not in control of anything that they own or post are not necessarily a secure, consistent, or reliable service. Stadia is an exploration into game streaming where users are purchasing products that will require a constant high speed connection, most likely come with a high latency delay that will affect gameplay, and where products will be housed within a remote digital only vault that completely locks down user rights and removes a player's ability to have any control whatsoever over the games that they have purchased. This brings us to one of the primary reasons why digital-only games fully integrated with DRM protocols are a wonderful thing for publishers and a terrible thing for gamers. A digital-only product controlled by Google or EA or Bethesda or whatever company it may be can never contribute to the second-hand games market. When you shift to a digital-only landscape with no consumer control over their products, you ensure that any new player that wishes to play your game must buy that game at the price you have set forth. Instead of grabbing the disc from their friend and playing it for a couple of weeks, or buying up a cheap secondhand copy at a dying franchise outlet like GameStop, for instance, they have no other option than to pay the full tag price at a digital store and then access that digital-only product through the tightly moderated portal offered by Google or Epic Games or Activision Blizzard, etc., etc. It's not just nostalgia or aversion to change, as some critics will try to propose. There are certainly convenience benefits to digital downloads under certain circumstances, but the truth of the matter is that shifting to a heavy DRM-focused landscape that entirely exists on company servers, which eliminate a consumer's ability to control any aspect of the purchase, is restrictive and harmful to players. I won't make the argument that gaming in general has not improved in a number of different ways over the past few years. There are soaring positives that have contributed to fantastic games and innovations, but the shift towards digital-only games, and now through Stadia and perhaps more services like it in coming years, digital hardware, which sounds like an odd concept I know, the shift towards these concepts is not entirely positive. It may seem appealing to no longer worry about hardware upgrades, expensive graphics cards, or a new console generation that is potentially marked up even further because of trade wars and tariffs. It's easy to sit here and ignore the skepticism with the assumption that these services we enjoy will exist forever, and even if they don't, by the time they disappear, it will be well and truly after we are finished using them. So what does it matter? It's hard to picture an industry where Steam disappears anytime soon, but a service like Google Stadia? That should conjure up a bit more skepticism. And if there were any guarantee that once you had purchased a game, that game was yours for life, none of this would be relevant. But the consistent truth of our current economic climate is that companies rely on cycling merchandise through consumers on a consistent basis. Why do you think a new iPhone comes out like clockwork every year, with only marginal changes, long before the hardware of the past version is obsolete? And why does it always have a ridiculous price tag which is in no way justified by the new features? The reason is because companies need to raise their profit margins and increase their bottom line. That's an inevitability in a capitalistic environment. And the same is true of gaming. A shift to digital-only products allows a company to have far more control over consumer spending, and though I frequently make the argument against the concept of a zero-sum game in areas like game development, when it comes to consumer rights, it is a zero-sum game. Any increase in control for a digital platform or publisher, or seller for that matter, is a decrease for the consumer. And though there are holdouts, such as GOG, where CD Projekt Red deliberately relinquishes control in favor of consumer rights, that is merely one example among dozens, and they are not in indicative of a wider market trend. 
Bottom line, Google Stadia and digital-only games, for that matter, is something to be extremely skeptical of. Online-only digital download games are not your friend. They offer convenience, but at a severe cost, and the growing library of digital games that many players enjoy are not as secure as they may think. But in the end, this is just one voice against the grinding wheel of technological progression, so I don't expect very much to come of it. I try to buy physical products whenever I can, but in the rapidly advancing modern industry, that might not even be possible for much longer. Hell, they even put cardboard discs in physical boxes now with a digital key on the back. Consumer control is a rapidly dying concept. That's it though. If you want to support the channel, check out the links down below. We have merch, various memberships, and I don't normally do this because it's far from necessary and I kind of feel weird doing it, but here goes anyways. YouTube has finally started dinging my videos as inappropriate for most advertisers, which is not actually true, but whatever, which may end up being nothing really. But if you want to support the channel, we do have a Patreon page. It's not something like other Patreons you may have seen. I don't give you my Snapchat. I don't even have a Snapchat. I'm not pretty and I don't post cosplay pictures or NSFW, I don't, none of that. It's got one small subscription tier so I can buy beer and Slim Jims while I edit videos to eat and consume. And it's far from necessary, but if you want to support, it's there. But you really don't get anything back out of it other than the exact same content I already produce and will continue to produce. So yeah, if you want to support, it's there. That's it. I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Thank you all for watching and have a nice night.